but it can also draw, uh, draw uh, people to your music. I mean, you don't have to be Bono to, uh, to have interesting lyrics. No. A lot of people can actually like these tongue-in-cheek lyrics. Well, yeah. Um, you know, it's proven. Mm -hmm. I think as far as dance music is concerned, not a huge amount of people want to be challenged mentally at two o'clock in the morning when they've got their hands in the air. They don't want to think about, you know, the political goings on of the past 20 years. They want to go, ah, that's all they want to do, you know, which is fine. Yeah. And then they'll go home the next day, they'll put on a bit of U2 and they'll think about, you know, war. But then, you know, when, when the weekend comes, you, you, you want to you wanna leave, you want to leave those worries behind and just go and have a dance. You know, yeah. that's what I would think I predominantly cater for. You yeah. know, if, if, you know, if you're going to have your niche, it's quite a nice one to have. What did you have in mind when you wrote the lyrics for Acceptable in the 80s? Because uh, we were both born in the 80s. All right, OK. Um, I had, uh, uh, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to write a song that's really obviously about the 80s? I had so many songs with sort of mild 80s references little ooh, little synth stabs that sounds like it might be from the 80s but I just thought let's just go all out and just do something like that so I did that was it and you, you sing I've got things for you if you were born in the 80s <coughs> yeah what are those things I'm curious well th there aren't any things <laughs> there's really no explanation behind any lines in that song other than it is what it is mm -hmm. which I like yeah and you've also got the, the song, uh, The Girls. Yeah. Self-explanatory, that one. Yeah. Are you such a womanizer? Oh, no, yeah. It's, it's self-explanatory, but it's not autobiographical. No, right. It's, uh, you know, the lyrics are lyrics. It's not, no, none of the songs are about me, per se. They're just there. They're just there. Yeah. You, you name a few, uh, a few girls from different countries. Where are the Dutch girls? I didn't think it fit rhythmically with the patterns of speech in English so I omitted it however um, I think it's fair to say that I cover every single girl given that I start with white black and Asian so you know True. white Dutch girls mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that but then yeah I did get into the the countries and there have been a few upsets, including yeah. that one. And for that, I apologize. You, uh, there's also been a cover made by Dragonet, yeah. a band from, from well, Canada and London. <coughs> what was your initial reaction when you first heard their version? It's called The Boys. Yeah. It's uh, adaptation. I was like, oh, okay. Just that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Didn't you feel flattered, for example? or did you? Well, I sort of knew it was going to happen already. Because the guy whose idea it was uh, said you should do... Because I was working with Kylie at the time. He said you should do a song with Kylie and she should do The Boys. Just ask her. And I couldn't ask her because I think it's daft. And then he, the same guy really liked Dragonette. So he said, uh, you know, they were trying to drum up publicity for their album and stuff. So they said... Oh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll do that. And then they did. And it's all right. It's I all mean, right. it sounds like it's been knocked out in about 10 minutes, but <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. And they're nice. I met them, and they were very nice. Yeah, you met them in Scotland at a festival. Yeah, that's right. I, I interviewed them as well. Yeah. Oh, right. 